Grace Notes, a weekly conversation about theology, music, and preaching here at the Chapel of the Resurrection at Valparaiso University. I'm Pastor Jim. I'm here along with my colleagues, Dr. Sunghee Kim, Director of Chapel Music, and University Pastor Kate. We're here to discuss what we're thinking about as a musician and a preacher uh, in preparation for this Sunday service. Our hope is that this conversation will help you prepare for worship either here at the chapel or wherever you are. We started with an excerpt from the postlude uh, that Dr. Kim has prepared uh, for this weekend. Uh, tell us about this music. Yeah, this week's postlude is uh, Tokara in Seven by John Rutter. Mm -hmm. John Rutter is quite well known for his beautiful choral works. Right. Besides his choral works, he composed a few organ solo pieces. Oh, interesting. Not many, but this is one of the well-known pieces. As you can see, uh, you can get some hint from the title, Tokara in seven. Right, so it's in seven. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it is written in a septuple meter. Okay. So there are seven beats in each measure. So, uh -huh. so it's quite interesting to hear the purses moving around. It's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And it moves back and forth? Yeah, from section to section. Oh, interesting. So phrases by phrase. Yeah, yes. very interesting. Yeah. Almost like an undulation, maybe. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so this piece is not written based on uh, any liturgical theme or uh, hymn tune. Mm -hmm. This is a pure organ repertoire, but I still think it's quite well fit well to the service because of its uplifting and lively mood. Okay. So I thought it's really good to have this piece as a postal look to conclude the, uh, the service with joy and happiness. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I do like that. <laughs> yeah, Pastor Kate, what are you thinking about as you preach? What's the text for this Sunday? Yeah, so the gospel story we have this week is one of probably the most familiar stories, I think especially for anyone who grew up as a kid going to Sunday school. Uh -huh. Um, it's the story of the disciples and Jesus are out on a boat in Lake Galilee, as they often are. But it's the middle of the night and a storm comes in and oh, the sure. boat's getting, it's, I mean, you it's gotta think it's a pretty little boat because right. these aren't rich guys. And the boat's getting rocked and waves are coming in and the boat's starting to swamp with water. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, Jesus is taking a nap in right. the front of the boat. So the disciples run up and say, don't you even care about us? And Jesus stands up and says to the wind, peace be still, and the storm stops. Okay. And the disciples are left with, who is this guy that right. he has that power? Um, and so for me, thinking about it this week, the question that's really popping out to me is when the disciples go to Jesus and say, don't you even care? Okay. Because that, that question feels really familiar to me right now, I think. It's not often spoken that way, but if you think of all the conflicts that we've shared as a society just in this last year and a half from uh -huh. COVID and all the arguments about how to treat COVID uh -huh. to the racial injustices that are more in the news lately in the right. last year to, you know, we had a terrible election season that was really frustrating to a lot of relationships. And I think sometimes as we're throwing accusations at one another about what you believe, what I believe, what's different, Sometimes it's easy that the underlying question is, you don't care don't you like care. I care. Don't you even care? Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, so I'm curious to, to like play with that question a little more and relate to, to what's going on in our personal lives. But uh -huh. I think the hope that I see or like the good news that I'm looking for is the disciples start with that question, but they end up with that question of like, who is this Jesus? Uh -huh. And one answer to that is, the, is the, the big one with this story is like, wow, this guy has the power to still the storm. And right. who else can do that but God? Right. Right. So Jesus that's, is God. That's a very straight interpretation. Very straight. Yeah. But I think the, the, the connected to that is like, God is using that power to care for us. Mm -hmm. And that God does care. Mm -hmm. And that's where the hope comes in and the call for us as disciples to follow. So um, there's a stilling of the storm in creation, but there's a stilling of a storm in terms of our own internal anxieties or, yeah. Yeah. So there's two things happening. Yeah. That's beautiful. Great news. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Thanks. Great. Dr. Kim, what should we be listening for as we listen to the whole postlude? Well, this piece consists of three parts. Uh -huh. The first part, it's quite fast, uh -huh. and then the second part is very quiet. 
kurang lah ya. The whole three sections are full with the filled with all the dissonances. Okay. So the first part. So you will hear that yeah. kind of sound. Right. If you play that one quite fast. That's beautiful. Yeah. So that's why I am calling this part splash of water. Uh -oh. And then the second part. If I move my left hand in the right hand position. Oh wow. Oh, Thanks for watching Grace Notes. I'm Pastor Jim here with Dr. Kim and Pastor Kate. If you have any questions or comments uh, regarding what you've heard today, please send us an email at chapel at valpo.edu and we promise to write back. Uh, if you're having trouble finding a place of worship where you live, please write us as well and we can help you with that. And now, until next week, we're gonna close with uh, Takata in Seven, performed by Dr. Sunghee Kim.